Hi, my name is Eric. I am a fifth generation American born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, and I am shooting this video in November of 2019 in the Mojave Desert of California. Now I've taken some of my family's home movies and divided it up into three parts, basically dividing them based upon the decade that that footage was shot in. So this footage is home movies of my family from the 1970s. All of our home movies from the 1970s were shot on an 8mm silent film camera, so unfortunately there is no audio, but most of this footage is of me. And we start out at the house that I grew up in, 4310 Bearwald Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. And I actually do have these recent photos of the house. Uh, this is what it looks like in the summer of 2019, and that's pretty much the way that I remember it. So this right here is the very first footage of me. I'm thinking that this footage is sometime in 1971. As you can see, I am extremely young and just learning how to walk. And this right here is my grandmother, Lenore, and she's trying to uh, help me learn how to walk around the living room of the house. And all of my memories of my grandparents and growing up in the house are just very happy, fond memories. And I'm incredibly grateful that I was raised by people as wonderful as my grandparents. And it was a really cozy kind of suburban house to grow up in and spend my childhood in and make friends and all of that good old middle American life that I got to lead. That right there looks like, based on the, the background, I know that's the uh, the dining room, and we're headed into the living room right here. So we're just kind of pacing back and forth uh, between those two rooms. It can be kind of difficult to discern exactly what is what uh, with the image being so tight and close up, but every now and then something pops in and there's a clue as to which part of the house I was in. So... I'm pretty certain that that is uh, my grandmother. We never get a good look at the person's face, but I'm definitely assuming that that's her. And uh, I look quite content <laughs> and happy to be learning how to walk around the house. And, you know, this footage is stuff I'm so grateful that I even have. I mean, I didn't know that this stuff even existed. And then right there is my grandfather, Paul, and you can see the look on his face. He's He really, really loved me, and I really loved him. And uh, it's so precious to me to have this footage. I believe that he would have been around i think 55 years old when this uh when this footage was taken and i actually believe it or not vaguely do remember that television that's behind me and the cabinet that that television sat in and i believe that my uh grandfather might have actually built that cabinet for the tv and then that right there is my uncle my Uncle Jack, you can see him very, very briefly in a couple little shots right there. And yeah, this is uh, really great stuff to have. I think that looks like I'm, again, I think I'm in the dining room right there. I think the, I think right behind me is the desk that had the telephone on it and I'm crawling towards the living room. Now, this next set of footage 
is, I believe, Christmas of the same year. So this would be my first Christmas. And that right there is my Uncle Jack uh, holding me. I think we're, again, probably looks like it might be the living room of the house. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, the footage is pretty out of focus. But right here, uh, looks like Jack's trying to help me still learn how to walk. Uh, this would be, I was, you know, less than a year old. At this point, I would have been about uh, about 11 months, about 11 months old. And I believe uh, he walks me over to there's my mother. So that's really nice to have footage with her. And there's my mom holding me and showing me the Christmas tree. And I have absolutely no memory of this, but... I remember my mother looking like that. I remember her you know, being that young. I think that all kids kind of remember that because your mother is so important and somebody that you're so attached to. And I definitely look <laughs> quite happy clinging to her hair. Uh, this This footage is definitely in the dining room of the house because I recognize the uh, sconce there above the window. And our Christmas tree was always in the exact same spot. <laughs> My entire life, uh, the Christmas tree was always set up in the dining room uh, in front of the window that was in front of the house. So I'm certain that that's exactly where the tree is at. And there again is my grandfather holding me. And that is my very first stuffed animal and I actually still have that stuffed animal. Uh, it's a little dog and it has a wind-up music box in the back. Uh, it no longer has ears. <laughs> that little dog has not had ears for a long time and I love this shot here uh, with me and my grandfather again. Just a wonderful thing to have. I'm I'm really happy that this footage exists. Uh, it's it's really neat to see this stuff, even if I was so young that I, I obviously don't remember any of this. But it's so cool to see it, and it's so nice to have. <laughs> and the the look of my grandfather's face there is just wonderful. And there, I just look very upset about something. I don't know, quite some, quite the consternation on my face. And I believe that this footage, oh, there I'm finding the, that stuffed animal. I believe that this footage is uh, the same as that one other clip. So I might, <laughs> might have some of the chronology of this out of order. Um, and this, of course, it's looking like... Um, uh, kind of getting closer to being able to walk on my own every now and then. I do remember a lot of things in this shot. This is in the living room and those steps in the background to the right go upstairs. And I remember that table. That was the coffee table that was in the living room for a long time. I remember that pretty clearly. And I even remember that uh, flower vase that's right behind me. And the layout of the living room is, is quite different because you could see for a brief moment the television there was on the uh, right-hand side of the screen. Throughout most of my life, the house was arranged so that the television was actually right behind where you see me right now. So it was to the left of the staircase. And I think that as we come up here, and I'm crawling uh, forward... I think we'll see a few other relatives that uh, haven't been in here before. Now, that horse is, that toy horse right there that I'm sitting on, that is something that I also remember really clearly and was in the house for a really long time. I remember it being uh, down in the basement 
even like as late as when I was a teenager, you know, it was still down there, tucked away in a corner somewhere. And there I am with my mother again, and she's just wheeling me back and forth on the horse. Again, it still looks like this has got to be around Christmas time because you can see the holly and the candle there on the table in the background. So I do think this was Christmas, and it looks like there's a few uh, Christmas bulbs on the table there to the left in the background. And let's see. What comes up next? I'm just shoving stuff in my mouth like all little kids. Oh, it's a baseball. Oh, that's kind of funny since I never really enjoyed baseball. Never played it. My grandfather loved baseball and was very good at it, but uh wasn't my thing. I preferred things like horseback riding, so there you go. <laughs> I'm paying much more attention to the horse than to the baseball. But this footage is... Uh, now, this clip right here, this is some of the worst footage that I have. Uh, this footage is really, really bad. The quality of it is is awful. It's incredibly dark and really difficult to see. But I think that this is footage of me and a gentleman named Bob Thomas, who was my mother's... Uh, first husband. I honestly can't tell for sure if it's him or not because the footage is so dark. Uh, that right there, that toy that I'm playing with, uh, that's something I do recall as well. It was this little clear ball that had smaller balls inside of it. And so you could wheel it back and forth and it would make all kinds of noise and I really loved that toy when I was a kid. I remember playing with that thing a lot. So it's it's kind of surprising to me to see just how young I am in this footage. You know, probably one or two years old. And uh, knowing that there was a toy that I played with that I still remember. Uh, that one, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> that, that is not a toy that I recall. And again, see here, we're just, we're going out of focus... It's uh, it's just, this footage is really bad. I mean, I was almost going to get rid of this. I, I wasn't even going to use it because it's just, the quality is so terrible, you can't hardly see a thing. And I did try in the computer to clean it up as much as I could. So believe it or not, it looked even worse. <laughs> it looked even worse than this. Uh, so yeah, it's... It's not all that great. It was probably shot, you know, at night <laughs> with no lights and uh, a film camera that was not adjusted properly. But I do remember that toy, so uh, I guess it's worth it to have the footage at least, at least for that, to know that there's there's some memory of mine uh, that is recorded on here. And that right there is, that is the guy I believe uh, is Bob Thomas. And there you can see him holding me and giving me some beer because, you know, it was the 70s and that's what you did with little kids. So that's probably the most alcohol I ever drank in my life right there. Uh, <laughs> I just, you know, it's never been my thing. Uh, but I looks like I'm kind of, kind of giving it a try there before I uh, before I was even <laughs> big enough to walk so yeah Bob Thomas was a really cool guy and I remember he ha had like a he had a motorcycle and the first motorcycle that I ever sat on was his and I must have been about three years old, and uh, there's like a photo I have of me sitting on, on Bob's motorcycle. And I remember going uh, behind his house, and there was this uh, kind of like swampland that was back there that was really cool. And now this footage is, <laughs> obviously I'm a little older, I can, I can now walk. 
And this footage is all in the backyard of the house at 4310 Bearwald. Now, when I was around this age, I was probably, you know, two, three years old. One of the things that I was absolutely obsessed with was the garden hose. I mean, I could play with the garden hose for hours and hours. Um, I remember my grandparents occasionally, uh, you know, turning the water pressure very low <laughs> because if it was on full pressure, that God only knows what the water bill would have been because I would just, I would play with the hose all the time. Now, when I was about in junior high, I think, uh, my grandfather built an addition onto the back of the house and that does not exist yet. So this right here is uh, me in the driveway. So this would be looking out towards the street. So my house, this this is the neighbor's house that I'm touching right there, and then my house would be to the right in this image. Now we're looking the other way. Now we're looking up the driveway, towards the backyard, uh, towards the garage. So now the neighbor's house is on the right and my house on the left. Here's a brief shot of uh, my mother hanging up laundry. Uh, and there's my grandmother uh, hanging up laundry in the backyard. And here it looks like I'm filling a little swimming pool with the hose. And I believe that's uh, my Uncle Jack. Yes, that's my Uncle Jack. And uh, you can see the house there right behind us. And like I said, I just... I played with the hose all the time. I was just so fascinated with the water and watching the way that the water would flow and kind of experimenting with different things that I could do with the hose. I mean, I just, you couldn't take the hose away from me. The garden hose was just magic. And you see there, I'm like <laughs> putting water on the car. Why Why am I watering the car? Just because it was interesting. It was cool. I like, I like to see the way that the water would flow over the chrome of the bumper. And I just thought that that was, I don't know, it, it really, it really held my interest. You can see there, I'm just like washing different pieces of the car. Obviously, again, I don't remember any of this in terms of the details. Uh, I vividly recall playing with the garden hose all the time, but you know, all these moments of uh, playing with the ball and wandering around, uh, don't remember any of that. Now, Cedar Point Amusement Park in Sandusky, Ohio, is an amusement park that's been around for a very, very long time. It's been around since the 1800s, I believe. And here are a few brochures from around this time, like 1972, 1974. As one of the oldest amusement parks in the country, Cedar Point has been around for 150 years. And a lot of the rides that I went on as a little kid are still there to this day. Some things just haven't changed. Everything from the tilt a whirls to the roller coasters to heck even the merry-go-round is still there but one of my favorite memories going to cedar point as a kid is riding one of the oldest coasters that they have it's been around for well 40 years this coaster is the gemini and it was built in 1978. It is a racing coaster. So you'll notice on the right-hand side of the frame, there is another track. Well, when you ride this coaster during the summer, there are actually two trains going at the same time. And you never know which one's going to win, the blue or the red. <laughs> so <laughs> you take your pick. But I have very fond memories of the Gemini because my grandfather and I uh, would ride this coaster 
over and over and over again. Uh, there were times when we probably rode this thing, I don't know, maybe three or four times, like, per visit. And it's a really fun coaster, and I'm glad that Cedar Point actually has this kind of POV footage from the front car so that people can actually see what it looks like. A lot of the footage that I have from my childhood is, you know, not very good. It's not very clear. So I just kind of wanted to throw this footage into the video just so you would have an idea of what it really looks like <laughs> when you are watching footage that is actually in focus and, uh, <laughs> you know, has the proper exposure. So this is the coaster that my grandfather and I rode many times when I was, geez, like eight, nine, ten years old, something like that. And this coaster is still there to this day in 2019. This coaster is still around. It wasn't the first, but I know it was one of the first coasters to be the Stubular... Stubular? <laughs> the tubular steel track on a traditional uh, wooden structure. Uh, like I said, it wasn't the first one, but it was among the first. Uh, this kind of approach wasn't done very often before this. So this right here is the end of the Gemini. It's this great spiral turn at the end, and it takes you right back into the station. So now... Here is all of the footage from the 1970s. And a lot of this footage, unfortunately, uh, isn't all that great. But there you can see, there's me uh, riding the kitty rides. And I got my sunglasses on. <laughs> and I'll tell you, man, I do remember, again, I was about three years old. And you could not get me out of the house without wearing those sunglasses. There's me and my mom. We're on the merry-go-round, and I got a Mickey Mouse shirt on. Hey, how cool is that? Uh, a Mickey Mouse shirt. And to, you know, end up working at, uh, working at Disney when I'm an adult, it's like a, a precognitive, uh, <laughs> a precognitive event to be wearing a, a Mickey Mouse shirt. So, those sunglasses, like I said, I, I would not leave the house without those sunglasses. I wore them all the time. That is a shot of this huge Ferris wheel at Cedar Point. Again, this footage, unfortunately, is really bad. But uh, that Ferris wheel is really cool. It's As you can see from the picture, you can see it well enough to see how huge that thing is. And it's kind of a famous landmark uh, for the amusement park itself. But, yeah, a lot of this footage is just really, <laughs> really not good. It's blown out and hard to see. There's the Sky Ride, uh, one of my all-time favorite kind of rides at the amusement park. I remember uh, going to Cedar Point in my 20s when I was dating a girl who actually used to work at the park and uh, I remember making out on the sky ride you know it was like something I wanted to do all my life like I just want to go out with a cute girl and make out on the sky ride you know and I actually got to do it it was wonderful this right here oh my gosh I I wish I could remember that guy's name. Uh, you can see that, that guy right there at the big old sideburns. Um, that is another of my uh, mother's boyfriends. And I remember when I was a little kid, I used to like, uh, he would come over to the house and I would, I would like jump on his stomach. He'd be laying on the couch and I'd climb up on the couch and I would jump on him. And I, I like loved doing that. And, uh, you know, he was, he was uh, very accommodating. Uh, to me when, when I wanted to do silly stuff like that and uh, yeah I just unfortunately don't remember the guy's name uh, those hat shops right there uh, have always been there um, 
even as late as the 80s and 90s, I still remember seeing those. Uh, here again is some footage of me on these little race cars. I still remember those race cars. You know, I can I can almost feel the steering wheel in my hand because they were these like cast iron steering wheels. They had that distinct gray color and this really distinct texture to them and they had a lot of weight to them, you know, because well, they obviously had to stand up to little kids playing with them for 12 hours a day, so they had to be built pretty solid. So this footage is vacation footage at the Kinzu Dam in the Allegheny National Forest in Warren, Pennsylvania. Now here's some modern photos of the Kinzu Dam, and that right there is the reservoir that is above the dam. And I remember going here so often as a child. This was kind of one of our vacation spots. And it was about three hours away from Cleveland. And Warren, Pennsylvania is this tiny little town. It was very quaint. And uh, we would go there and, you know, my grandparents, it was usually just my grandparents and I, you know, uh, my grandfather, my grandmother, and myself, and the three of us would go. And, you know, in all honesty, there wasn't a whole lot to do. It was this sleepy little town, and we'd get a hotel, and we would go to the dam, and we would just look at the water, and I'd go and skip rocks on the river, and we'd go out to eat, and we'd go hiking in the woods, and, you know, that was, that was it. <laughs> like, there really wasn't a whole lot going on in uh, Warren, Pennsylvania. And this dam was actually built in the 1960s. I believe it might have been like 64 or something like that. So, you know, it was actually relatively new at the time. So this dam was probably only about 10 years old uh, in this footage. And this is uh, one of the few times that my uh, grandfather was actually taking a very slow shot. <laughs> so... So enjoy this before it zooms back and forth. And there we go. So there is me fishing. Um, you know, it's funny. I've never, never been into fishing. And I don't even remember this. Like, like I've never been a fishing kind of guy. So uh, I didn't even recall that I had ever done that. But apparently I was fishing at uh, at the Kinzu Dam. <laughs> So this, I, I don't even know where this is. This could be the reservoir above the dam or somewhere by, with the river below. I, it's probably, it looks like it's, it looks like it might be the, uh, the reservoir above the dam. But, yeah, like I said, that's all we did. We would just kind of wander around the woods and, you know, go to little national forest things and have a picnic and stuff like that or wander around the town and look at historic stuff and you know it was just kind of a relaxing sort of really mellow little vacations that we would take up there and we would usually we would usually go like once at least once every summer uh, sometimes we would go more often you know I would always get excited when they would spring it on me as you know a surprise like all of a sudden it's like hey you know we're going to the Kinzu Dam. <laughs> that we would just leave. You know, and we'd stay up there for a weekend or something like that and then come back home. So there's me standing next to the dam and I remember that. I do remember uh like it's like this fascination I had with flowing water, right? Just like the garden hose, but this was the garden hose times ten thousand. And uh I really liked getting up as close to the dam as I could and, and as close to the water as I could. And this this shot, I believe, is on the, on the back side of the dam. And there are all these bird nests that they had made up there along the back side of the dam. So that's why you see so many birds fluttering around. And you can kind of see the nest, but it's a little difficult to see in that shot. And this this is definitely the bottom of the dam. This is the river. And the river 
actually flows down into the town of Warren, Pennsylvania. So the, the town that we stayed in was you know below the dam. It was downriver from the dam. And here's me just strutting around. Got those sunglasses on again, of course. <laughs> and I think there's just some footage of me like tossing rocks in the river. Another thing that I just love to do as a kid, there I'm waving. <laughs> yep, here we go. Throwing some rocks into the river. Or setting rocks in the river. Here we go. There we go. All right, now we're throwing some. Again, I don't know why this fascinated me so much, but anything involving, you know, moving water or me doing something to alter the surface of the water just was amazing to me. Here's my grandmother and I just going for a walk around the Kinzu Dam. Like I said, that's all we really did. There wasn't a whole lot going on, but oh, I definitely got those sunglasses on. Every single time. So you know, this is this footage is uh, gives you a good idea of what it's like. My grandfather's uh, filming skills have definitely improved <laughs> over over what he was doing in the 1960s. Uh, he has learned to tilt and pan a little more slowly, uh, take his time. You know, keep the shot a little wider so we can actually <laughs> see what's going on. And it doesn't look like he's chasing after Bigfoot. So, yeah, you know, the mountains out there are really, really beautiful. And you know, I haven't been there since, uh, well, since I would go there on vacation with my family. Speaking of vacation, <laughs> now, this is one of my favorite places to go. This is Torch Lake, Michigan. And my grandfather was a member of the American Legion, post 572 in Parma, Ohio. And these people were people that he knew from the Legion. That guy right there in the sailor hat, that guy was named Lefty. And there you can see me. And there's my grandmother, Lenore. And there is a shot of Lefty again. You can always recognize Lefty because Lefty has always got that sailor hat on. And uh, Lefty was one of those people that I just loved him. I don't know why. I don't know what it was about Lefty. But, you know, sometimes you're a kid, you just kind of make those connections with people. And um, I did with him. You know, uh, Lefty was a guy that I really, really adored. And he was also in the American Legion uh, with my grandfather. And the people who owned these cabins up at Torch Lake in Michigan were the Harlack family. And the Harlacks were also in the American Legion, and uh, they would just allow fellow Legionnaires to go up there for, you know, a week at a time during the summer. So this is, you know, probably one of the first times that I ever went, because uh, this footage is so old. And there's the two boats that were there for as long as I can remember. And some more footage of me. And Torch Lake over the years has become a lot more popular, a lot more touristy. But it was uh, kind of a secret little place at this time. And then that right there you can see, uh, we called that the old pier. Uh, the, the dock that they're on, the pier that they're on is cement. And you can see it's all broken up and everything. It's because in the winters... When the lake would freeze, uh, the the whole dock just got ripped apart, you know. So this footage, somewhere in here, uh, it actually cuts to a different year. It, it cuts to a different summer, but I'm not sure where that cut takes place. <laughs> but the reason that I know that it's two different summers is simply because the dock changes, uh... Like right here. Oh, no, I'm wrong. This is the same summer. The dock didn't change. Okay. So this right here is funny. You can see Lefty is laughing in the boat, and the woman in green is like half falling out of the boat. That was Lefty's wife, and uh, Lefty would never let her get in the boat. 
he would <laughs> he would always <laughs> he'd always bring the boat over the dock, pretend like he was gonna let her get in, and then he would move the boat just enough and she would fall into the water and everybody thought that this was hilarious and would laugh like crazy all the time. So <laughs> I, I have very, very fond uh, memories of Lefty and, and his wife and being at Torch Lake. And Lefty and his wife are also the first people that I ever knew who owned an RV. And I was fascinated by that, like a house that was on wheels. I thought that was the coolest thing. So this footage is with uh, Opal. And that's me on the front porch of my house at 4310 Bearwald. And that is Opal, one of my all-time favorite dogs. So that looks like that's my mom right there. And uh, Opal was this beautiful German shepherd who was incredibly, incredibly protective of me. And the funny thing is, in my memory, I always remembered Opal as being a grown dog. But... In seeing this footage, it's obvious that she's still kind of a puppy here herself. Like she's not, she's not a full-grown German Shepherd. That's way too small. Uh, obviously, this is around Easter time. It looks like, right? I remember those decorations being used many times over the years. So yeah, just a little bit of footage of uh, me playing around with Opal, and I'm so glad that this footage exists because again, this is footage that I did not know we had this. So. You know, I have very uh, fond and vivid memories of the dog, and I really love that dog. And uh, the fact that it's like, oh wow, I've got I've got actual film footage of me and and Opal together. Like, that's really cool. You know, I'm so happy that that exists. And those are my uh, grandmother's flowers out in front of the house. She was always very proud of her her flowers that she was growing out there. And uh, the front of the house didn't change all that much. There's the address, the 4310 on the steps, which uh, when we redid the porch, we put them on posts. We put the uh, the address on posts, so it was no longer on the staircase. <laughs> There's having me kiss the bunny rabbit. It's funny that I'm just as tall as that inflatable rabbit. <laughs> but, yeah, this... Uh, Oh, and there's me dancing. So, there you go. Eat your heart out, Danny Terrio. So, this right here. We're getting near the end of the 1970s footage. This is my fifth birthday party. That kid right there, that blonde kid, his name is Danny. I do not remember his last name, but he was one of my very first friends. Uh, that kid right there, uh, his name is, that is, I believe, Eric Buke. And... He didn't live in the neighborhood, but he lived, uh, his grandmother did. Uh, she was like three houses down. And the, the, there's four girls in this video. Uh, that woman right there, not sure who she is. <laughs> so uh, here we're doing a pin the tail on something. And there's Danny. And he lived right across the street from me. And uh, we were friends... You know, right around this age, and then he moved away, and I, you know, never saw Danny again. But uh, the four girls that are in this video, um, two of them are like my, what would it be, my second cousins, or the, well, they're basically, they're the daughters of my godmother, okay? They're the daughters of my godmother. And the other two girls are these girls named Nancy and Nora who lived right across the street from me. So uh, I don't know which one is which. So there we have Danny and Eric. And there's one little girl. There's another little girl, and there's two more. So I think it's those two girls there might be Nancy and Nora. And there's my mom. And I'm blowing out the candles. And somewhere in here, uh, we'll see my godmother. So there's my grandma. There she is. There's my wonderful godmother, Linda. And she was on, on screen for half a second. She was gone. Yeah, so I think that girl right there and that girl right there, these really the really young kids, I think they 
are Linda's children. Uh, that guy right there with the mustache, that's Linda's husband. And there is Linda again very quick. Unfortunately, this footage is again back to the uh, the fire hose technique of just zooming back and forth. And those two girls right there, I think that's Nancy and Nora from across the street. I have no idea what their last names are, <laughs> but I remember their first names were Nancy and Nora. And there's Linda. There's my mom. And that was it. And let's just quickly pan around super fast again. Yeah, totally disorienting. I have no idea what we're looking at here. <laughs> it would help if uh, the panning slowed down just a bit. So you can see here when my uncle and I were doing the transfer, we tried to kick the footage into slow motion so that you could get a little better idea of what we were looking at. But yeah, the camera is unfortunately all over the place. And that again right there is uh, Linda's husband. And oh good lord. And that right there that I'm playing with, that little plastic thing, that white plastic thing, I believe that was for uh, little toy cars like Hot Wheels cars. Because I, I remember that thing. I remember having that little box and, and putting my toy cars in it. And we got a little bit of Linda again. Now, keep in mind, as fast as this is going, remember this is in slow motion. <laughs> so if if this wasn't in slow motion, it would be really impossible to figure out what the heck we were looking at. There's a play school something that I got. And... Um, opening something else, I, I don't recognize any of these things, except I do remember the Hot Wheels car case. That's one thing that, that is familiar. But yeah, a lot of this stuff, no idea what any of it is. That's funny right there in that shot to see the baseboard of the house, because I can actually remember that pretty clearly. Like the shape of the baseboards, you know, one of those little details that just sticks in your mind, you know, and is, is part of your memory of the place you grew up. Yeah, there's a, well, there's a little ambulance thing back there. I kind of remember that toy. And it looks like I had a number of Hot Wheels cars there that I'm messing around with. Oh my gosh! This is like a music video. It's cutting so fast. It's ridiculous. And that carpet was such a mess. Oh, there's my grandmother crocheting. All right. I think that's a I think that's a 6 million dollar man toy. And then this footage right here of me playing with whatever is that it looks like they're Legos. Um this actually lasts for a while, so thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness the camera is not cutting and whipping all over the place, and it, and it actually stays in one spot for a little bit. So, yeah, I don't remember a whole heck of a lot about my fifth birthday party. Um, I actually think that this, I wonder if this was my, I've only had one surprise party in my whole life. So I don't know if it was my fifth or my third, could have even been my sixth birthday, I, I don't remember. But I know I had a surprise party once, and I was very excited about that, because I thought everybody had forgotten my birthday, and I came home, and there's a whole bunch of people, and I thought that was really, really cool, you know. And... Uh, being so young, I didn't even know surprise parties were a thing. <laughs> so that made it all the more exciting. So, yeah, I think it looks like I'm just playing with the with a bunch of Legos there. So yeah, it's it's funny. We go from tons of really fast shots and fast pans and cuts to this very very long uh, shot of me toying around with the Legos. But you can see I'm just sort of making stuff up. See, 
that's me right from the start, being creative, not following the directions. And here is the last of the 1970s footage of my family. This is my Uncle Jack and his friend uh, Bill Miller playing basketball in the backyard of the house at 4310 Bearwald. So that garage uh, does not exist anymore. I know that uh, after the house was sold and other people had, you know, bought the house and moved in and everything, uh, that garage was torn down. And there is a garage there still, uh, but it's a completely different one. Um, and honestly, you know, as much as you you don't want to see your childhood home uh, get changed, I kind of don't blame them for tearing down the garage because it, it was kind of a mess. And, uh, you know, some of the wood in the back of the garage was like all falling apart and kind of rotted out. So, you know, it probably was a good idea uh, to replace this garage. And honestly, that uh, that basketball, that basketball net, uh, I don't even remember that. <laughs> So, yeah, that, that probably wasn't up for too long after this because I, I don't remember there ever being a basketball hoop mounted to the garage. So clearly uh, that must have, must have gone away fairly soon. And you can see on the left-hand side of every shot here as it pans over just right there, you can see there's a pine tree, and uh, it looks amazingly small. <laughs> that pine tree right now, I mean, we don't get a full shot of it, but it looks like it might be, what, maybe 15 feet tall, maybe? You know, it's like a little taller than the garage. And, uh, man, when I was growing up, that tree was taller than the house. I mean, it was a good 25, 30 feet high. So it's kind of wild to see uh, that tree being as small as it is in, in this. But... Yeah, this is the end. Um, uh, Bill Miller, unfortunately, uh, passed away uh, pretty young. He <laughs> he was a funny, funny kind of guy. Uh, I remember the thing that he would do with me all the time when I was a little kid is he would, anytime he would shake my hand, right, we'd see him at church or, you know, something like that, and he would come over and he would shake my hand like, like as if he was like going into convulsions or something, you know, just like this like rapid fire shaking of my hand. And I'd be like, uh, you know? <laughs> and he, like every single time he would do that. So, uh, yeah, it was just one of those, you know, goofy, goofy things that people do at little kids. But he was a, he was a good guy. You know, he was always, uh, he was always a nice guy. And I know that, uh, my uncle and, and Bill Miller were pretty close, and <laughs> and my uncle told me that you know this is all they would do is play basketball all the time. So uh, so there you go. So there are some home movies of my family from the 1970s. <laughs>